I'm Bruce Redfern. I'm an MCT and a, I'm the operations manager for CDC Train Canada here in Victoria, BC, uh, where it's um, still in the morning. But uh, I know we're, we're dealing with uh, many time zones, so welcome to you, whether it's morning, afternoon, or night. I don't think it's night for anybody, but there you go. Um, so what we'll be talking about today will be the Hyper-V uh, server role in Windows Server 2008 and managing that uh, both with Windows Server 2008 and with the Virtual Machine um, Manager program, which is part of the System Center suite of programs. So you may hear that referred to as SCVMM, or System Center Virtual Machine Manager. Um, System Center encompasses a number of other products as well, wants to manage your desktop and wants to manage your server and look after backups and manage your stuff, your help desk and everything. So System Center is a wide suite of products. Um, but what we'll be concentrating today on today is the ability of that product to manage the hybrid server role inside Windows Server 2008. So I'm going to start off with a little background on the hybrid server role, what that is, um, and then move into talking about how we manage that through Windows. And those management tools are quite adequate if you just want to run a, a virtual machine off a Windows server. Uh, but if you want to manage multiple machines running virtual machines, that is a data center or a private cloud, uh, then you're going to want to move on to something like Virtual Machine Manager to be able to manage multiple servers simultaneously. Uh, so that product will make the job of uh, managing those multiple virtual server hosts uh, much simpler and will allow you to start to do things like move machines between hosts and uh, move um, and uh, automatically provision new machines. For example, we need a new SQL Server. OK, well, I've got one in the library. Let's just create one from my virtual machine library uh, that Virtual Machine Manager maintains. So that's uh, what I'm going to be covering today. What I'm going to be presenting is essentially a, um, a abbreviated or an abridged version of a course that we offer here at uh, CDC Train Canada, uh, which is the 10215 course. Um, the 10215 course gives you um, a thorough background in implementing and managing Microsoft Server Virtualization using Hyper-V uh, and takes you into how to use System Center Virtual Machine Manager to manage multiple Hyper-V hosts. So that's where you're thinking of going in your own organization if you're thinking about uh, setting up a private cloud or even if you're already managing virtual machines but are looking for a better way to manage them, uh, then I would recommend that course to you. So that's course uh, 10215, and um, just to show you that for a second, uh, what we'll be doing, what I'm talking about, sorry, that's not the window I meant to open. Let me get rid of that window for a second and go to another window here. So, www.traincanada.com. If you're ever looking for a course, uh, from us and you want to get some details on what that course covers, whether we offer that course, what days it will be scheduled on and so on, all of that information is available through our website. So I happen to know the number of the course. I can type in 10215 up here in the search field, uh, but I could also have typed Hyper-V or um, Virtual Machine Manager or something like that and have it come up with the same thing. So this is the course I'm talking about, Implementing and Managing Microsoft SQL Server Certification. Um, it is scheduled in many locations, so if you're interested in finding out if it's scheduled in your location, uh, you can simply change the location and search there. And if you go to the goal sheet, it will tell you what it covers. Right? So this covers many things about Virtual Machine Manager, that is System Center Virtual Machine Manager, uh, the hybrid roles, and so on that are covered uh, in this course. And I'm going to be covering that course in the next 35 minutes. So I'll, be, I'll try to be succinct and not cover anything extra, um, but that's what I'm going to be doing. So just a little intro first on, um, well, first off, myself. I'm a Microsoft Certified Trainer. I work here in the Victoria branch as the Operations Manager, but I also train for a company. I've been training Microsoft Technologies for about 15 years now. And um, I specialize in Windows Server, in SQL Server, and in SharePoint, um, and also desktop operating systems like Windows 7 uh, as needed. So uh, I've been working with Microsoft's virtualization products for quite some time. Uh, you may be familiar with other vendors, and of course there are other vendors of virtualization products out there, but Microsoft started down the virtualization path when they uh, acquired Virtual PC from Connectix and started to use that as their, um, 
as their virtualization platform. Uh, it has, it, it's quite adequate and it's in fact incorporated into Windows 7 under, under something called Windows XP mode, uh, but it's not a server grade product. They upgraded that and turned it into Microsoft Virtual Server, uh, but it, with the advent of Windows Server 2008, they've integrated that virtualization capability right into the Windows Server 2008 platform, and it's called Hyper-V. So Hyper-V is our virtualization technology that is part and parcel of Windows Server 2008. You buy Server 2008, you get Hyper-V. You don't have to buy anything extra. They do actually have a separate product called Hyper-V Server, which is separate from the operating system, and that's actually free. But if you want an operating system, you know, with a desktop and, and file system and uh, being able to run programs in there, then you'll want to get Windows Server 2008 and then install the Hyper-V role. So the Hyper-V role is a role that a Windows Server, um, Windows Server 2008 box can take on. If you're not familiar with roles, Microsoft packages out the capability of the individual uh, machines or the individual, uh, sorry, functionality of Windows Server into roles. So as part of managing a server, I would go to the server manager, which is our main tool for um, configuring roles, and I would add this role. This role, there are many roles that you can add to a Windows Server 2008 product. I have Hyper-V installed here, as you can see. Um, just there in the middle of the screen. Just one second while I run something else here. Let me get to my desktop. <laughs> there we go. Let me read that one. Okay. So back here in the server manager. Server manager window. There it is. Sorry. Um, I've got Hyper-V installed. Right? So it's one of the 17 roles that are available on the server. If you didn't have it installed, you would hit add roles. Oh, no. Sorry. <laughs> Cancel that. Cancel. I almost restarted my server accidentally there. I do apologize for that. So what I was going to say was if you had needed to do that, you could hit add roles and add the Hyper-V role. Once you've added the Hyper-V role, you can then manage virtual machines using Hyper-V Manager. So Hyper-V Ma Hyper Manager is a tool that allows me to create and manage virtual machines. So each of these machines that you see listed here is essentially a separate Windows Server 2008 instance. Uh, sorry, not necessarily Windows Server 2008. In fact, client one here is Windows 7. But it is a separate instance of an operating system running in a window inside this server. So I'm running Windows Server 2008, just to show you the properties of my machine here. I'm running Windows Server 2008 Enterprise. Right. Within this running machine, I have enough memory, 8 gigabytes, and enough disk space available that I can set up virtual machines and run them. So I have Hyper-V installed, and I have these virtual machines created, and I can start them, run them, shut them down. I can create new virtual machines and so on. And all of this is possible because I've added this role. Now, the way that we manage these machines, first off, we would create them. Um, and by creating them, I would allocate them a certain amount of memory and a disk in which to store their files. Uh, sorry, a disk file in which to store their files. And I can associate other settings with them, like the amount of memory that is allocated to them. So this machine has been allocated 768 megabytes of RAM. Um, it's been allocated one virtual processor. It's got a hard drive, which is actually a, a file on the host machine's hard drive. And it has a connection to a network. Okay. These virtual machines can be connected to, set to different networks, and I can manage those networks using my virtual network manager that allows me to create internal and external networks. So the internal networks are available to the virtual machine and to the host machine. The private networks are available only to the virtual machines, and the external network uh, gets the virtual machine connected to the outside world. So if you're going to set up a web server or an exchange or a server or something like that that needs connectivity to the internet or to the rest of your network, then you would set up an external network. So all of those are aspects of a virtual machine that I create. When I create a new virtual machine, I go through the process of configuring these things, giving it a name, giving it an allocation of memory, giving it a network connection, which network would I like it to be connected to, uh, giving it a virtual hard drive or using one that I've already created and so on. Right, and then installing an operating system on it. Um, obviously, doing this each time, creating and installing a new operating system on it each time would be tedious. So what we end up doing after a while is we'll have 
uh, a library of machines that have already been set up to a certain point, and then we can use those as the starting point for our new virtual machines. So even if you were not using the product I'm going to be talking about later, the Virtual Machine Manager product, you could still create hard disks or create a virtual machine and install Windows on it and then essentially borrow its disk to create new machines from, so copy its disk, if you will, uh, as a process of cloning virtual machines. So there are um, lots of advantages to this product. It gives us that ability to run these virtual machines. We can connect to them from the network, assuming that they're accessible, but we can also connect to them from within the host machine. So here I have the client running. I can select connect on the right-hand side. It'll pop up a pro uh, window that shows me my connection to this Windows 7 platform, and I'll just, um, I will maximize this in a second. There we go. Uh, so you go to full screen, and now I could log into this virtual machine. Now, as you, if you've used any other virtualization technology, you know I can't press Control or Delete at this point because that would go to my host machine. So there's a special key code, keystroke combination, Control Alt End, and that allows me to log into this virtual machine. So here I am connecting to and um, using a Windows 7 machine, which is running virtually inside my Windows Server 2008 platform. I'll put that back to a window here and just go back to this. Now, through this console here, I can do additional things such as snapshot that machine, which is essentially record the state of the machine right now. So if I wanted to do some testing, I could do some testing, and then when I was finished, I could revert the machine back to its current state. I can shut it down from here as well, and as you saw, I can connect to it. So all of that is inherent from adding uh, this, um, adding this virtual machine capability to Windows Server 2008 and then hosting uh, this Windows Server 2, so in this case this Windows 7 virtual machine in there. Mm -hmm. Now that in itself is a very useful capability of Windows Server 2008 as I was saying. Um, so we, in order to do that, as I was starting to go through there earlier, I would have added the Hyper-V role. Right, so it would have, I need to make sure that my hardware is capable of that. All modern processors from Intel and AMD are capable of that. You have all the hardware you'll need to check whether that is possible. You'll need to install that role, and then you'll be using that Hyper-V manager to manage, sorry, yeah, the Hyper-V manager tool to manage that role for installing virtual machines, cr creating virtual machines, managing them, starting them, shutting them down, changing their settings, and so on. Okay? And you can also do this remotely. So I have another machine here uh, where I um, where I'm connecting to remotely, um, which I need, which I can also have um, Hyper-V Manager installed on. So I could do this as a remote administration. So this is the other host. Now you can do these kinds of administration cent <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> centrally as well. So I'll disconnect from my remote machine and go back to my local Hyper-V Manager. So you see here I'm also managing that other host remotely. So I have a machine over there. I can do the same thing. I can start it up. I can shut it down, change its settings. And I can also <coughs> create new virtual machines over there or new hard disks to be used as the basis for virtual machines on that remote machine. So this is uh, some of that those details about the capability of running Hyper-V. If you have an AMD uh, processor with the AMD V feature or an Intel processor with the VT feature, both of these are capable of running Hyper-V. There are some settings you will need to do in the BIOS in order to support that. <coughs> Intel's initial 64-bit processor platform that they came out with a few years ago does not actually support Hyper-V, so you need to use one of the modern processors. And um, you also need to be running uh, Windows Server 2008 in the 64-bit edition. If you're running Windows Server 2008 R2, that's only available in the 64. So install it as a server role. Uh, once, it's, once it's installed, you'll need to reboot, and then you'll have access to Hyper-V Manager, and you'll be able to use that to install and create virtual machines. So that's as much as I'll say about the, the actual installation of that. I do want to go on and talk a little bit more about the features of um, Windows Server 2008 R2, or sorry, Hyper-V, and also about um, uh, the Virtual Machine Manager, uh, which is uh, the, other, the other capability here. So I won't take you into configuring, uh, creating and configuring virtual hard disks and virtual machines. That's fairly 
Um, top, well, it's, it's fairly deep topic, and we don't really have time to, to cover it. Uh, but I would like to talk a little bit about System Center Virtual Machine Manager. So, System Center Virtual Machine Manager is a tool that I can use to manage that Hyper-V role on one or more servers. It's essentially a centralized management tool that extends the functionality of Hyper-V. So it doesn't just manage the ability to create virtual machines, start them, stop them, that sort of thing, but also gives us functionality like a library of virtual machines and the ability to move a virtual machine from one host to another. And if you set it up correctly, you can actually move a, a running virtual machine from one host to another uh, so that clients can maintain their connection uh, during that time. So um, the System Center Virtual Machine Manager is a one of the one of the components of the System Center suite. Uh, as I said, many components there. I'll talk about some of the requirements for that, some considerations for implementing that. Uh, the three main pieces would be to have a server that manages your virtualization hosts, that is, your machines with Hyper-V installed. Uh, the creation of a database of uh, information about those machines and their hosts and and, um, and their templates and so on, and then a library of virtual machines and virtual networks that you can use. You can also set up a self-service portal with this, but that's probably um, so sort of beyond what most people need. But if you do have an environment in which perhaps you have developers who need to be able to rapidly provision a virtual machine for testing purposes, then you may want to also set up the self-service portal. That gives users that ability, uh, authorized users, obviously, that ability to create virtual machines as they need. Um, so what is it used for? It's used to manage the Hyper-V hosts. Uh, it can also manage, and this is an interesting part of this product, it can also manage older virtualization technology, uh, Virtual Server 2005. Uh, so Virtual Server 2005 R2 was the last release of that product, but some people are still using it to run virtual machines. And so if you still have those virtual machines hanging around, you can manage that with System Center Virtual Machine Manager. You can also manage VMware hosts. So if you're looking at sort of migrating from a VMware environment to a Windows Server 2008 Hyper-V environment, uh, but you, of course, don't want to throw out, throw out all your VMware hosts and VMware machines at once, and do an en masse conversion because that would probably take you some time and would be, you know, uh, disruptive to services. You can start installing System Center Virtual Machine Manager and start creating Hyper-V machines, but at the same time continue to manage your VMware hosts and your VMware virtual machines through that same interface. So that gives you sort of um, a going forward migration path, if you will, from VMware to Hyper-V. Interestingly enough, with the System Center 2012 product, which is um, not actually released yet, but will be probably released this year, uh, they can they can also manage uh, Zen virtual machines as well. So you can manage uh, VMware, Zen, and Hyper-V from the same product. So using that product, System Center Virtual Machine Manager, I can manage and deploy my virtual machines. So I can start and stop and change the settings of virtual machines. But I can also deploy new virtual machines. I can create a library of disks and, and virtual machines ready to create. And it also has facilities for creating or for, for performing physical to virtual and virtual to virtual conversions from existing um, servers. So you have a server. We've got this server. It's you know the machine. The hardware itself is. Uh, out of warranty, it can't be supported anymore. I want to turn it into a virtual machine. Well, from the the System Center Virtual Machine Manager console, I can migrate that machine into a Hyper-V virtual machine. I'm not going to say that that's going to be without problems. There will always be some things that will come up uh, around uh, hardware uh, supported configurations and so on uh, when you do that conversion. But it does it is able to launch the conversion automatically from the System Center Virtual Machine Manager console, and it is also able to do virtual to virtual conversions from VMware to, to Hyper-V. So if you're looking to move to Hyper-V in the long run as your virtualization platform uh, to perhaps cut down on licensing costs for other products, then System Center Virtual Machine Manager provides a lot of the capabilities that you'll need to manage that going forward. The components of this product consist of a VMware, sorry, not VMware, <laughs> a virtual machine manager server. Uh, it's going to maintain a database of configurations and a library of virtual machines and virtual networks that can be deployed. 
It will also um, be managed through the Virtual Machine Manager Administrator console. And uh, if you configure it and choose to set it up, you could also have a VMware service. I did it again, VMware. My, my apologies. The Virtual Machine Manager self-service portal through which an authorized user could log in and say, I'd like to create a new machine from this uh, library that, uh, machine that you have already. So you have a, a SQL Server 2008 R2 uh, virtual machine in the library. I want one of those, right? And of course, we, we would we have control over how many machines they can create, and who, of course, has those rights. And then um, what it can do from that console is then create host groups and manage my host servers through there. So those are my infrastructure components. Um, there are hardware and software requirements, of course, like there are with anything else. You need adequate disk space. Um, but what has what has changed in uh, with the R2 revision of this is it now has enhanced support for SAN transfers. So SAN transfers, I can move a virtual machine from one host to another. If the virtual machine disks are on a SAN, of course, I don't need to move the files at all. I can leave them in the storage area network and simply move the configuration of the machine from one to another. Right, so it's running on host one. I choose it. I choose to move it to host two. I do need that SAN infrastructure for that. Uh, it has uh, enhanced support for the shared storage between the virtual machines. A quick storage migration, so I can quickly move a component from one location to another. I can move a host into maintenance mode, so it doesn't trigger um, alerts and so on on that machine while we're doing maintenance on it. For example, and I can also set up uh, virtual switches so that different groups of hosts can talk to one another. And this also support is supported for my VMware port groups. Uh, so VMware has that facility for creating uh, communication port groups inside its product, and we have virtual switches and virtual machine managers to support that same cap uh, capabilities. And virtual machine permissions can be signed in uh, Hyper-V. Um, and then managed or supported in my virtual machine manager. Um, there are some considerations there for installing it. If you're going to install it, you're going to check out all of this stuff. And I don't have to have this virtual machine manager running on a dedicated host. And in fact, I'm going to show you in a moment, I'm actually running it on a virtual host. Uh, it's only there to manage transitions. So if I want to move a, a host from one or move a virtual machine from one host to another, for example, or start up or shut down a virtual machine, I'll need the virtual machine manager or something uh, to do that. But I don't need it to be running all the time. Um, it also um, supports storing that configuration information. I mentioned it has a database. It ha you can install a SQL Server Express Edition with it, or you can create your own version of SQL Server, and then you have no limitations on the amount of uh, space uh, that the, the database can take up. So there are some issues there uh, around using the built-in one. So I won't talk any more about that. Um, it also has, it comes with a number of tools, and I won't go through the installation. Obviously, that's going to take us too long. Uh, but if you had uh, a need to automate this, it does support PowerShell management. So if you want to script the creation of virtual machines, uh, you can run PowerShell scripts to do that or, or script the moving of a virtual machine or the changing of the configuration of a virtual machine through PowerShell. It supports all of that too. Um, so I won't go through the rest of these about the configuration manager or the PowerShell. If, you've, if you're familiar with PowerShell, you probably recognize some of this, um, the format of these PowerShell commands here, but get checkpoints most recent on this virtual machine and restore the machine to that checkpoint, for example. So this would be a way of turning a machine back or moving it back to a snapshot in the Hyper-V terminology. Uh, it's called, they're called checkpoints inside Virtual Machine Manager. Uh, one of the things the Virtual Machine Manager allows us to do is create virtual machine groups or host groups. Sorry, not, not virtual machine groups, but host groups for the machines hosting virtual machines. Um, so, so we'll look at, uh, I'm going to show you that in a moment. Um, but the types of hosts that it can support, any of the Windows Server based virtualization, of course, but also Hyper-V ESX Server 3.0 and above. Uh, it supports Virtual Center and it will support VMware vSphere 4, but only the Virtual uh, Infrastructure 3 um, level of features with that. Okay, um, so just to cut to the chase, let me show you what that looks like. I'm going to go to my virtual machine manager. So this is a machine running virtual machine manager. And let me just get my video off the screen there for a second. Participants. Turn that off just so it doesn't get in the way. There we go. Um, so virtual machine manager here has 
the ability to manage multiple hosts. What I've created here is a host group. I've got my NYC host one and my NYC host two. These, I can add machines to this group. Right? Um, the properties of the group are basically which hosts make up this group. <coughs> Excuse me. And I can also do reserving a um, certain percentage of CPU on the host machine so that they can continue to function as operating systems because obviously I will need to be able to talk to them. Um, and also, I can also tell it whether to use the automatic um, or what automatic criteria to use for whether we put a virtual machine on this uh, host. So one of the nice things about a host group I've got two in this, is I can say I want to have a new virtual machine and have Virtual Machine Manager recommend which host to put it on. Now, the hosts themselves are hosting virtual machines, obviously, and one of the things that this is doing essentially is replacing my need to use Hyper-V Manager. So to, just to go back to Hyper-V Manager for a second, if I look at the Hyper-V Manager, here are my host one and its virtual machines. So you can see I've got six virtual machines created on host one. If I go to my virtual machine manager, I can see those same six machines here. From here, I can do things that I cannot do from Hyper-V. For example, I see that this client one is running on NYC host one. Okay? I can, for example, do the standard Hyper-V configuration or management tasks in here that I would expect. I can stop it, I can pause it, I can save its state, I can shut it down. Um, but what I can't do from Hyper-V that I can do from within here is I can migrate it to another host. Now when I migrate a virtual machine to another host, okay, what will happen at this stage, because I don't have this on a cluster, and if I had a SAN set up on a cluster I could do something more interesting, but I don't have that here, but it will say I'll save the state of that machine. That is, it will essentially snapshot that machine. It will remember its state of memory. So it will save the contents of memory to a disk file. It will uh, remember where all the disks were, all the processes and everything that was running. And then it will essentially stop that machine or pause that machine, move it to another, another one of my hosts, and then start it up again. And it will start up from exactly where it was. Right, so it's warning me here. This will cause saving state on the virtual machine, resulting in a temporary loss of service. Of course, that's, a, that's better than a complete loss of service, because if I knew that my host needed to be maintained, in other words, I have to shut it down and put some more memory in it, or add a hard drive or something to it, um, or maybe I need to install patches on it that are going to cause a reboot of the server, then I'll, I would want my users to be able to continue to use the services that are running on that host, or running in the virtual machine, when I move the virtual machine from one host to another. Right, so I want it to save its state and restart it on the other host from the same state. You know, I want it to do that. So this I would expect. Now if I say yes here, it's going to say, okay, where do you want to move it to? Now you'll notice that it's giving me the option of moving it to two hosts. I only have two hosts at the moment, um, but one of them, of course, is the other machine. It's currently sitting on NYC host one, right, as we can see here. And it's suggesting that I move it to NYC host 2. This star rating here comes, up, comes from Virtual Machine Manager examining the capabilities of that machine, looking at its workload and deciding which would be the better machine to move it to. So it's giving a slightly higher rating to NYC host 2 than it is to the current host. It's about four and a half stars versus four stars. Right, so if I say, yes, I'd like to move it to NYC host 2, right, says, so okay, where's the virtual machine going to be? Well, it, on each machine, it's going to be in the EVM folder, uh, which is a local storage location for the virtual machine. When I do this, uh, it's, it's going to ask me also about network connectivity because it was connected uh, on one machine to a certain network. Which network would you like it connected to on the other machine so I can choose a network to connect it to? And then when I'm finished, I can hit move. Now, if you were going to do this frequently, um, you'd probably want to capture the the um, sorry the PowerShell script that would cause that action to occur. So, if you wanted to schedule this to happen, I don't know, at midnight because you needed to offload host one because you needed to do some intense processing on one of the virtual machines there, for example, you could take this script and create a scheduled job out of it. So, they handily provide this ability to view the script. 
So here's the script or the PowerShell script that would do the same task I'm about to do through the GUI. Right? So I mentioned that in my opening uh, there that that uh, all of this PowerShell, sorry, all of the Hyper-V activity uh, that we do through Virtual Machine Manager can be done through PowerShell as well. And the, the GUI interface gives us that ability to see that script and save it. Now I'm just going to hit move. I'm going to let it do it through the graphical interface. And that's going to start a job. So a job is one of the things that Virtual Machine Manager does. So obviously, every, life is going to go on as normal for the other virtual machines that are sitting on this host and the virtual machines that are running on this host. They just continue on. But this client one is moving now. It's being migrated from host one to host two. That started a job. Now, if I went and looked at the Hyper-V Manager, I would see some indication of this. So client one here is actually um, being saved at the moment right, by Virtual Machine Manager. But now that I've got Virtual Machine Manager, I don't really need to use Hyper-V Manager anymore. I can leave, I can just use this tool to do everything that I need to do. I go to the jobs, I'll see this job is running. I'll see its status down here. Right? So it's in the process of deploying the file right? using a, a bits copy in the background from the one host to the other. And it's got to do other things. It's got to create checkpoints. It's got to change virtual machine status. It's got to run pre-checks and so on. Then it moves the file, and then finally it moves the virtual machine from one host to the other. So that's a virtual machine manager capability. I can sit in here and move my virtual machines around at will, essentially. Okay. Now, the one thing that I don't have here, which is very impressive in virtual machine manager, is the ability to do a live migration. So what I'm doing right now, I'm doing uh, essentially a save and restore of that virtual machine. Now it remembers everything about the virtual machine, so who was connected to it and so on, and right? it's remembering all of that detail, uh, but it's not going to maintain connected or not going to allow users to connect to that virtual machine while it's being moved. Right? The virtual machine is essentially off the network and, un and invisible during the move process. Once the move has been completed, the virtual machine will be started again and resumed from where it was. So if a user was connected to that and doing something, their work is not lost. It's still there. It's just that in that in interim period, they were not able to connect to the virtual machine. Once the machine has been started again, then they'll be able to connect to it again. So it will have its its existing identity, its existing IP address, its network name, and everything uh, that the client was was connected to, right? And uh, they'll simply be able to resume their work, whatever they were doing. If they were querying the database or or what have you, uh, if that was a database server, uh, then that that query would carry on because the state of that query was remembered. Now, obviously, in the meantime, between the moves. Uh, what, sorry, while the move was going on, any network connections that were attempted or any um, refreshing of data would have failed because it wouldn't have been able to reach the machine. So one of the really nice things that they've done with the Virtual Machine Manager and System Center Virtual Machine Manager R2, the 2008 R2, is they've create, uh, um, provided this ability to provide high availability to that virtual machine so that it continues to run while it's being moved. And that's what we call live migration. So that's probably where I'll finish up my talk. I just want to have, talk a little bit about that uh, before we stop and see if anybody has any questions that we can follow up with here. So um, high availability in System Center Virtual Machine Manager 2008 R2 is built uh, first off on the, um, on the failover clustering capability. We can failover cluster the virtual machine manager, the hosts that host the virtual machines, uh, and so on. Uh, but we don't actually need to do that to make the live migration work. What we need for a live migration is the ability to um, have the virtual machine files kept off the host and the connection to the host maintained as the virtual machine is moving from one host to another. So I'm going to talk about that. This is all, of, all about bit of the clustering in here, so I'm not going to talk about that. Uh, but I will talk about uh, live migration. Okay? So um, if you want to make your, your virtual machines highly available, you will want to cluster them because in our current scenario, if host one fails, all the virtual machines that are, available, that are currently running on host one will become unavailable. So we would want to provide that clustering so that if host one fails, Host three can take over, for example, 
running those virtual machines. In order to make that work, um, we need to have our storage of our virtual machines not on the host. They need to be on a storage area network, which kind of goes without saying, really, because if host one fails, any disks that are inside host one become unavailable. So those disks do need to be out on your storage area network, which is a pretty typical configuration in any case. Um, so we would want to have that failover clustering. However, uh, that failover clustering then gives us these, um, the ability to use clustered shared volumes, which means that one disk can be shared by multiple virtual machines simultaneously and leads to better use of the virtual machines. However, live migration builds on top of that so that we can move a running virtual machine from one host to the other. So the way this works is clients are connected to a virtual machine that's running on node one and retrieving their email or querying the database or accessing the website, whatever is required. And I decide to move that to node two. Now what happens is we copy the, the, the state of that machine, the current state, from node one to node two. This is fairly quick. It's uh, basically the configuration of the virtual machine, what its IP address is, what its name is, and so on, to node two. And then we, uh, and then node two knows where to get the files. They're on the cluster storage, out in the storage area network. But we have updates coming into node one because that's where clients are connected. So over the period of a few minutes, the machine appears, uh, I was going to say it appears to stay running. It does stay running, but what happens is, over those couple of minutes, maybe, the updates that are coming into node one are being copied over to node two as well. So node one is constantly being updated by the clients. And as those updates come in, we copy those over to node two as well. So these are in-memory pages. Because we already copied the, the status of the machine, all the running processes and everything have been moved to node two. And it has access to the cluster storage, so it has access to the disks that that virtual machine is using. And then once we finish copying on the, over any um, live pages from node one, we switch it, and now node two is the live node. So that is, Kate, that is a possibility that uh, was only um, made available in the R2 version of System Center Virtual Machine Manager, but it allows you to migrate a running virtual machine from one host to another. All of the requirements still need to be there. They both need to be running Hyper-V. They both need to be um, hosts that are part of a host group that's being managed by System Center Virtual Machine Manager, R2008 R2, and they both need to have access to that cluster storage, that shared storage where the virtual machine hard drive is. But that then gives you that ability to maintain a uh, running server while you move it from one host to another, and that gives you basically the ultimate in uh, maintainability. So I'm going to I'm going to stop my storage uh, stop my storage stop my uh, my presentation there, and I just want to take a moment and see if anybody has any questions. I've been watching the chat window as we go, and I haven't seen any come in, but um, uh, maybe uh, Laura, I don't know if you wanted to uh, get involved here and say something about that. Actually, uh, I think Laura may be on mute. So uh, if you do have any questions, follow up questions. Uh, you can send them to um, your, obviously, your CTC sales um, manager or sales professional. And if you want to send me any questions directly, I'd be more than happy to help answer you there. Let me just quickly give you my email address so that you can send me any questions. Yeah, Bruce, I'm, almost he I'm also here. They can also use the um, Q&A tab on the side if they want to submit them online. Okay. So this is my my email address as follow on. If anybody wants to send any uh, question directly to me, I'd be more than happy to answer that. Or if you have a, a sales professional that you deal with at CTC Train Canada, you can send it to them and they will follow up. All right. Um, so I'll just throw the floor open right now. Does anybody have any questions right now that they would like to ask? You can unmute yourself through the audio capability of your system or if you, you can use the chat facility that's at the top of your screen uh, when you're connected. Yeah, if anybody has a question, if you can raise your hand, I could um, I can unmute your line. Oh, there we go. So, so Laura can unmute for you if you have a question you'd like to ask directly now. Uh, 
I don't see anybody with their hand up, Bruce, so I think we're no, good. I, I don't see anybody, any, uh, myself either. Well, if that's the case, I want to thank you all for attending. Um, it's been uh, great to be able to take a little bit of time and share the details of the Hyper-V uh, implementation of Server 2008, or a high-level overview, at least, of the Hyper-V implementation in Server 2008 and in the System Center Virtual Machine Manager product. And remember, if you were interested in taking follow-on training uh, specifically, or, or, or perhaps sending someone else on training specifically to do with the Hyper-V and uh, System Center Virtual Machine Manager uh, course, um, course or product, then that would be the product that you're looking for, or sorry, that would be the course you're looking for, 10215. That goes right through this. It goes through installing Hyper-V, uh, installing System Center Virtual Machine Manager, creating a, creating the database, creating a library, setting up a cluster. Uh, so you'll be doing um, non-live migration, and eventually you'll be doing live migration in that class. It's a very good class. It's five days long. It's very comprehensive. And in fact, it doesn't actually require you to know that much about Hyper-V coming in, because it starts from the ground up and introduces all of those concepts. But of course, if you do know Hyper-V, uh, you'll be well placed to, to uh, take advantage of that course as well. Okay, well, since we don't have anybody uh, raising any hands there, um, I'd, again, I'd like to thank you for attending. And please, please feel free to send us a follow-up email if you have any further questions or if you're interested in attending the 10215 class. And uh, I'm sure we'll be more than happy to help you. Okay, well, thanks everybody for attending and uh, have a good day.